Two top transgender doctors are sounding the alarm and putting the well-being of children ahead of the left's radical agenda. In a bombshell interview, the medical experts say we've gone too far when it comes to the use of puberty blockers and gender procedures in young kids. But the establishment and the media won't listen to them. Why? Because anyone who questions whether or not a nine-year-old is too young to undergo reassignment surgery or dares object to a biological male competing in women's sports becomes a public enemy of the woke mob. No one knows that better than athletes Alana Smith and Selena Soul. They're fighting back against the unfair competition. They join me now along with their attorney, Christiana Holcomb. Thanks so much for coming on. Uh, Alana, tell me a little bit about what your story and experience has been. Um, my freshman year of high school, I competed against the two biological males, and it was just really demoralizing to know that all of my hard work and all the other female athletes' hard work wasn't paying off, and we were really just racing for second and third place, and we weren't going to get the spots that we truly deserved to get. Mm -hmm. Selena, tell me about your experience. I was forced to compete against biological males throughout all four years of high school, and I lost out on countless opportunities, primarily the opportunity to qualify for the regional New England championships in the 55-meter dash, and if they weren't there, I would have qualified. And I've had to f compete against these athletes over a dozen times, and every single time I lost without fail. Mm -hmm. Christiana, it seems to me like this is a situation where uh, you're forced to get involved in uh, litigation and in, and in fights that you never really want to as a distraction during your high school years and, and the like. Uh, what are the legal aspects of these fights as you see them playing out across the country? Well, girls like Selena and Alana deserve to compete on a level playing field and have the same quality of opportunities that their brothers have. But Ben, as you and I both know, this issue is so much bigger than just sports. Radical activists, including those in the Biden administration, are threatening those who stand up for basic facts about biology and the fact that humans are either male or female. And, you know, we see this ideology play out with real human cost. You know, women are being forced and trapped in prison cells with violent male criminals. We see parents who are either pushed out of the conversation entirely or are intimidated into putting their children on hormones or undergoing life-altering surgeries. Even women are broadly being dehumanized by being referred to as, as chest feeders or birthing people. And the list just goes on and on. So that's why Alliance Defending Freedom and a broad coalition are standing up for basic truth and basic biology and to protect women and girls like Selena and Alana. Al Alana, tell me a little bit, and I'll ask this of you as well, Selena. What was the reaction among your friends, among your parents, among people you talked to when you tried to talk to them about the challenge of going through what seemed to be such an unfair experience? Well, my friends and family supported what I was doing, and they thought it was great that I was fighting for women's sports and ensuring that we weren't becoming sidelined in our own sport. The only backlash I really got was on social media from people mm -hmm. that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Selena, was it the same experience for you? I had a very similar experience as Alana. I've gotten nothing but love and support from my friends and family. My parents have been fighting this alongside with me, and I also have only really gotten hate from social media, but I just focus on all of the, the love and support. Mm -hmm. So then do you feel like this is one of those issues where the nationalized nature of social media, the internationalized nature of it, basically allows just about anybody in the world to take pot shots at you, whether they know you or not, whether they're going to your school or part of your community or not, that that's really what kind of drives this discussion now as opposed to letting places decide, letting parents and students decide for themselves how things like this ought to be governed? I think that social media is a big factor in this because people get a boost of confidence by hiding behind a phone screen. But it's just a really unfortunate situation because it should be accepted that women's sports need to be kept as just women's sports. Mm -hmm. uh, Alana, in terms of, of your own experience, this has to be something that's discouraging, but do you, have you taken some silver lining out of the fact that you've gotten that level of support that you mentioned from your friends and family? Yeah, it makes me feel really proud that my story has made it so far and that hopefully it'll help more female athletes to stand up so that change can be made quicker and so that women's sports can stay women's sports mm -hmm. and we can continue to um, compete on a level playing field. You know, it really seems to me like this is a, an issue that 
invades our communities and, and creates such a, a, a hard questions for, for parents and for communities to face in ways that are really unfair to all of the girls who are involved. And I want to thank you both for being brave enough to stand up and, and to push back against what is an agenda that obviously has enormous backing uh, from very powerful people, but really doesn't represent what the communities or parents or even the, stu the female students involved really want for their communities. Thank you all for joining me tonight.